Hi there, it's Dave from uh, Escape Trailers and Parts and Service. Just going to do a short video here. Uh, had a lot of questions lately about uh, winterizing the plumbing in your trailer. It's a really simple process. There's two ways of doing it. One with, uh, one with air and one with antifreeze. So I'll go over both. Um, but to start with, the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that your black tank and your gray tank is empty, as well as your fresh tank. So your black and your gray tank, this is a fifth wheel but they're all, you'll do the same for it doesn't matter what trailer. So you go to your dump site, pull your black, as you usually do, pull your gray, that will all drain out. So those tanks will be empty. Once they're done, you can shut the valves. Now back here, we have your fresh water tank. You see that, Daryl? There's a valve here. When it's pointing forwards, it holds water. When it goes to the back, it drains. So I always turn it to the drain, leave it. I'll turn it off here since we're inside. And then I'll go inside and we're gonna put our hot water tank into bypass. So we'll go inside and I'll show you where the bypass valves are. Okay, so here we are inside the trailer. This is a fifth wheel. Um, so you'll know where your water tank is. So down here is your bypass valves. You can see these valves. Basically, whatever way they are pointing is the, the way the water will flow, right? So the hot water is gonna come out of here and go that way. We don't want that. So we're going to put these in bypass. So to do that, they simply turn 90 degrees. There's one for the hot and there's one for the fresh water, the blue. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's right down there. So now the valves are pointing at each other. So this is going to totally bypass the hot water tank, which is what you want. Um, you know, if you're putting antifreeze in your trailer, that's six gallons. That's six gallons of waste and you really don't want to have it in there and cooking up and stuff so always put it in bypass doesn't matter if you're doing the, the compressed air or the antifreeze so now what we're going to do is we're going to go outside and we're going to drain our hot water tank so we'll go back out now okay so here we are outside the trailer again so we need to drain our hot water tank and for those of you that have dual hot water tanks meaning uh, 120 and gas there's an electrical switch down here. You can see that, Daryl? That's one of the reasons the manufacturer builds them this way. So when you go to winterize, you remember to shut that off. So off is in the up position. What happens is if you plug in your trailer and that's left on, the tank's empty, that element inside for the electric side will burn out. So we want to make sure that that is off. So now we're going to remove our anode rod. That is really the only way to drain a hot water tank. So what I always do is I pull my pressure relief valve because there'll be pressure in there and if you just take this out it will shoot out, hit you in the leg, which isn't nice. So I'll go ahead and take this out. It's a 1 and 1 16th socket to take this out. Now there's not much water in mine because it was winterized. I just added a little bit in there for effect. So when you pull this out for the season, that's a good time to check your anode rod. So you can see this one's nice and new. It looks really good. So that's good for another season. And I had one here. Here's one that needs replaced. So if you get pull yours out and it's quite chewed up, it's time to replace it. And you can pick that up at any RV place, Camping World or what have you. All right, so once this is drained all the way, what I do is I get some Teflon tape, wrap it around the threads, I've already done this one, and I put it back in. A lot of people want to leave it out, but what I find is over the winter, the threads get rusty and it's a lot harder to put um, the anode rod back in. So now that we're totally drained, we'll close that, put a little Teflon tape around there, Put it back in and we'll tighten her up. And that's that. So now the hot water tank is winterized and we're good to go in and do the rest of the trailer. So there's two methods, like I said, compressed uh, air. So I'm gonna do that first. So what we do, look these over here. 
Everybody that got a trailer got a blowout plug in their goodie drawer. And that's what it looks like. So typically you would screw that in there, put your air compressor on no more than 50 PSI. 40 to 50 PSI is good. The, the blow plug that you got with your trailer, somebody has to hold the air on there. So what I like to do is get an old garden hose, like so. I put an air fitting on the end. I put my uh, water pressure regulator there and then I screw that into the trailer. So now I've dialed down my air and I can do all this by myself without having any help. So I'll put that on there. Like so. And I'll hook up my air. Now we have air going into the trailer, the trailer thinks it's water, so now we can get rid of all the water in our lines. So we'll go back inside the trailer now. Okay, now that we got our air hooked up to the outside of the trailer, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around to um, all the taps and the toilet, and we're gonna keep doing this until there, just air is coming out, no more water. So, as you can see, I got it on the hot water side there. I'm gonna open that up, lots of water coming out there. And now we're going to start to get air. So basically, we are down to air now. This is just a mist coming out. And then I'll go to the cold water side. And we'll start getting air out of there. Said, we'll just keep that going and so it, all it is is air so that's just mist and air so now that we've done the kitchen we'll also go into the bathroom don't mind the mess in here this trailer's still under construction and i'll do the hot in here So I always start at the sink or the uh, whatever's closest to um, the water, the water uh, intake or water pump or what have you. So now we've done the kitchen, we've done the bathroom. Now we'll do the toilet. And now there's just air coming out of there. So the inside of the trailer is done. But what you folks want to uh, keep in mind too is if you have an exterior shower, you need to hook up your exterior shower and get the water out of those lines too. So you would hook it up as you normally would for water, open up your uh, lines, squeeze the trigger, and that cleans that out. A lot of people forget that and they'll come back and say, my exterior shower is leaking. It's usually because it's frozen. So we want to make sure we do that. And then once it's all blown out and it's just air coming out, you would get your RV antifreeze which is non-toxic. Um, so even though we've blown it out, we want to put some down your P-trap. So I put a third to half a cup of uh, antifreeze down the P-traps in the sink, the sink in the bathroom, and your shower drain. This one's covered up right now. So you pour some down there and that gets water in, or sorry, antifreeze into your P-traps. I also like to put some down in the toilet even though it's all empty there. A little bit of water that we had there would be resting up against your uh, waste gate. So pouring, you know, a cup of antifreeze down there dilutes that and you'll be good to go for the next season. Okay, so I guess the only difference between what we just did with the air is the method with the antifreeze. So all newer trailers come with a winterizing valve down by your... Uh, down by your water pump. And how that works is you would do all the same uh, preliminary stuff like we did. We drained it, drained our hot water tank. And then we would come in here. Oh, I, one point I forgot to mention is after you've uh, bypassed everything and drained your tanks, I always turn the water pump on for 30 seconds, turn the lines on, and that gets rid of the water inside the water pump. But this method I'm showing you now is for antifreeze. So as you saw the jug of antifreeze I had, what I would do is I would put this hose inside the antifreeze and turn this little valve here 
this way. So now it doesn't, the water pump does not want to uh, pull from the tank, it's gonna pull your antifreeze. So you'll need uh, probably two to three gallons of antifreeze for this. So once you've had it on here, you would turn your water pump on and then you would go to all the taps and you would open them in hot and cold until the only thing coming out was the pink antifreeze. And that way you would have antifreeze in all your lines. You make sure you do the toilet as well. That toilet valve is very sensitive to freezing. Um, and that's basically it for winterizing with antifreeze. And then of course your antifreeze is already gonna be in your tanks and stuff like that too, but it doesn't hurt to put a little bit more into your pea traps and then you should be set for winter with no problems in the spring. Okay folks, that's about it for me. Have a good day.